Welcome, welcome back to Trail and Ultra Running Training. My name is Will Franz. I'm a personal trainer and trail running coach. And the whole goal of this podcast is to help provide some good information so you can train a little better and just have more fun outside because that's why we're doing this thing. And if you enjoy this and you enjoy this information, then please share it with people or subscribe or leave a rating or review or anything that you know tells the robots that we are going to... Um, that people like it. That's all. So today, let's dive into a big mindset shift that a lot of us would benefit from, but a lot of people won't make. And for example, some people are probably just going to shut that off when they hear mindset shift because it's hard and annoying. So before we get going, if you're new to my stuff, I'm not really a fan of the like work yourself to death, get rhabdo and tape your feet together mentality. If that's you, great. But most of the time, I just find it to be somewhat irresponsible and think there are better ways to do things that would avoid those problems in the first place. That said, ultras are hard, and they're going to be hard, even when they're fun, even when things go well, even when we have a great time outside. They are hard. One of the athletes I coach is currently running Tahoe 200, like right now, as I say this. He is about 10 miles out from the finish, and it hasn't been easy. Um, A while ago, we got a text message. I ain't done yet, because I thought this was painful, but running 200s is painful. and It's accurate, because he has ankle problems. Um, Has for a very long time. Didn't get him in training. Got him many, many, many years ago before we met. And both of us knew that there was a very high likelihood that it was probably going to show up as he tried to go 200 miles, because it almost always shows up in these long events, but he loves them. So we keep doing them anyway. And that text message was sent 140 miles ago, and he's doing really well. He is almost certainly going to finish at this point. The ankle never got worse. It actually sounds like it's improved, from what I can tell. Um whatever magic the ultra gods gave on that one is really delightful, but shit goes wrong. And I just think that we should have an understanding that we should expect to work hard and we should expect for the event to be hard. And I think that it is really easy to say that and yet really easy to forget what that means when we finally get into it. There's been a big move towards like smarter training over the past however many years. And I think that's a, that's a great thing because far too many people, myself included, have gotten really hurt doing dumb shit to do things outside. But we should also recognize that like every great athlete spent a lot of time, usually when they were younger, just doing stupid amounts of hard work. If you read Killian's biography, or he just talks about running uphill pretty much as hard as he can until he couldn't breathe, and then doing it again the next day. Most of us, if we've had some level of athletic background, have spent a good amount of time just not really responsibly training and just putting in a bunch of work And this is partially where the injuries come from, but it's also where some of the capacity for work comes from. It is where the ability to know when you're really at that limit comes from. It is where we find um, not just this mental struggle, there's also some like physical benefits that come from it as well. And it's really hard to study these things because I don't think we can ever really know from a young age when a person is going to be an exceptional athlete, maybe 20 years later, right? I'm not even sure it would be, I mean, personally, I don't think it would be responsible to um, put these people under a microscope anyway when they're children. But I think there just is a quality, both physically and mentally, that comes from putting in a big amount of work and just pushing yourself until it's really difficult. And if that happens when you're younger, that's great because 
your recoverability is a lot higher because your hormone profile is insane and you can just recover better than we can when we get older. But no matter what, if you want to do your best, if you want to have some success in this effort or sport or whatever you're looking to do, it is going to be difficult. And there is going to be a moment where in every ultra where you want to quit. And it's just normal. This is a normal thing where there's a really good reason for you to say, hey, I I don't know, I don't want to make my crew stay out here anymore. It's cold, it's wet, it's dry, it's whatever. Um, my ankle hurts a little bit and I don't want to make it any worse. My knee, knee feels a little tweaky and I have another race in nine months and I don't want to jeopardize that. There will be a hundred really good reasons for you to pull out and they're all valid and yet the actual reason is you're just tired and that's okay but recognizing that there's going to be these difficult moments during your race and going into training with the understanding that part of training is getting better at dealing with these difficult moments is valuable and Doing pushing through in training through these difficult moments will give you a backlog of things to look um, look on when these moments come up in your race. When you're at mile ever uh, ninety <laughs> of a hundred or seventy, right when you're like heading into that overnight and things are just awful, and you just don't want to do it anymore, we can look back at that really hard workout you did and. You can understand that you made it through that and you pushed through like three more intervals when you really didn't want to and you didn't get injured. It just sucked. And then it was fine. And then your life moved on. And the next time you ran, it was fun. Same idea here. Mile 70 just sucks. And if you make it to mile 72, it'll probably be better. And I don't think we do a lot of good here in the fitness industry of making this or probably any industry really, but especially here, I don't think we do a lot of like good things to shift this positive mindset. And a lot of this comes down to sales because when people are selling like goals for fitness industry stuff in general, um, there's great, there's this old idea of sell Hawaii, not the plane flight, right? But as ultra runners, we talk about how hard it's going to be all the time. We talk about how hard the race will be, how you're not going to give up. And like we really push through it. But we don't talk about how hard it is on a day-to-day basis to just get out there and keep training for nine months. We don't talk about how endurance, how hard it is that it actually takes like years to build an endurance base. We don't talk about the boring bullshit of figuring out your hydration and your nutrition plan. We often, we don't definitely don't talk about it enough, the hard for a lot of people of trying to eat enough food on a daily basis, even when a lot of us have like body dysmorphia issues and we just struggle to have enough time in the day to get our basic tasks done, much less eat a fifth meal because we ran for three hours in the morning. All of that shit is hard, and we don't talk about it enough. And it's because we don't want to downplay the effort. We don't want to, like, push people away from making the effort to do it. But that's what it's going to take. So I think we should be upfront about it. Like, the training's going to be difficult. The race is going to be difficult you're going to have to do a lot of boring things like make sure that everything's scheduled and probably look at a spreadsheet here and there. You're going to have to schedule your day to make sure that you can get breakfast in, even though you're not usually a breakfast eater, but you kind of have to be now because you're training six days a week. All of that shit is hard. And it's, for many people, myself included, uh, harder than pushing through whatever mile of a race, because that's a single day. And this is the real heart is the day to day to day that leads up to the race. And 
like I just saw the dumbest IG ad, like Instagram ad the other day, where it was like somebody pushing um, an ultra and men who want to run a 50K and, or, and bench 225 in like six months or something like that. Yeah. And I mean, from a business perspective, it was a great ad because like it's going to make that person a bunch of money. And but it's it's a rough time because there's. There's a lot behind this that I'm not going to get into unless you're really a nerd about fitness industry stuff, then message me and we can chat. But this is a, this is a wild goal, right? Like run a 50K and bench 225 in less than six months. Is it impossible? Probably not. Um, I can do both of those things. But so it's not like you have to be a great athlete uh, to say that you can hit those benchmarks. But it's not an overnight process for either of them. And the training doesn't really support each other. Um, my ability to bench press does not help me run farther. And my ability to run farther certainly doesn't help my bench press. Um, they are very opposite goals. <laughs> and if anything, my ability to bench press heavy and help other people bench press heavy is actively detrimental to my running career. I can't say the same thing about like squats and deadlifts and a lot of the stuff I do in the gym. But the bench press stuff uh, is not helpful to running up a mountain. So when we have this like short time slot that we try to sell to people, it it's just marketing and it's shiny. And I think we often try to fast track it because, yes, we realize that it's going to be difficult, but... We don't really understand what the variety of that difficulty is. And we are willing to believe in something quicker and easier because we really want it to be true. And it's just not. And to me, I feel like the growth is in the work. And the point of doing these things in the first place is to grow as a human. And I think we get so caught up in the like markers or end goals that we think we just want to do it yesterday and we completely avoid the thought of the like growth along the way. I realize there's like the fall in love with the journey here, not the destination. And there is, there's something to be said for that, I guess. But I do think the destination matters. I think it's the, it's a marker and it's important. And by having these big goals, it pushes us to do the work on the day to day. But the work's going to be hard, and that's where all the growth happens as a human. And I don't, you know, feel like the, the sell Hawaii idea is good because it's disingenuous. Because if you can't get through an eight-hour plane white flight to Hawaii because you're going to have an, for some reason, you're going to have an embolism or something on the plane, we should know that. You should know that you can't make it there. So we should talk about what it takes to get to this big goal that you have. Should be open about it. Should be honest. And if we are willing to take a minute to accept the level and type of difficulty that is going to be our journey towards our destination, then we're able to accurately assess whether we're willing to do the work whether we're able to do the work, whether this is a good time in our life to dedicate six or seven days a week to training and whether we're able to like dedicate the recovery time that we have, probably not a great thing to do when you have a new kid or if you're about to move or if you're about to have a big switch up in your job. So if we aren't able to approach this in a realistic manner, we should know that so that we can do it later, right? So it takes time to train as an athlete. It takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of prioritization. And if you don't want to wake up early or stay up late or miss other things in your life now because it's just not a priority for you, then we should know that. And it's okay. But trying to overlook the fact that it's not just... The difficulty that we talk about, the fact that it's hard, is not just that it's going to be hard on race day. It is going to be hard most days in one way or another. I'm open with 
a lot of my disordered eating past, like one of the hard things for me is making sure I eat enough food. The hard things for me is scheduling my day because I don't do that well. I kind of fly by the seat of my pants. And if I'm not going to like put stuff into a calendar, then I am going to miss 12 things. And some of them are going to be eating and some of them are probably going to be training. And if we aren't willing to accept that the difficulty is not just going to be on race day, the difficulty is not just going to be um, pushing through a hard workout, then we should know that. Anyway, if we go into our training with a mindset expectation that it will be hard work, it will be hard work every day, and it's definitely going to be hard work to get through the event, we're just going to be a lot happier. And again, hard work isn't bad. It doesn't mean it's not going to be enjoyable. It doesn't mean it's not going to be fun. At least for me, I think these two things are like almost intertwined. I like working hard. Type 2 fun is actually fun for me. But if it's not for you, then we should know that before we go into it. I hope that was helpful. I hope this gives you some ideas for mindset shifts you or someone who you're talking to about doing a race because I think we're like oh this is really fun for me let me pull my friends into it and then just, they're just it's not their bag that's okay so like if we're talking to someone about it maybe maybe don't just sell the fact that we get to run for a really long time in the middle of pretty areas and that it's actually going to be difficult if we're a little more honest across the board then all of this will probably be better anyway have this helpful Hope you have a great rest of your day and go have some fun on the trails. Thank you again for listening to the Trail and Ultra Running Training Podcast. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Just a reminder, nothing you hear on this podcast is medical advice, and you should always speak with a medical professional before making changes to your training or your nutrition. If you enjoyed the podcast or found it helpful, please leave a rating or review. It tells the algorithm robots that people like it, and that means more people will hear it. Or even better, just share it with someone who you think would benefit. If you prefer a video version, head to the Trail and Ultra Running Training Group on Facebook or check out the Mountain Goat Endurance Coaching YouTube channel. Thank you again, and I hope you have a great next run.